Hello there. Anybody online with me yet? Hello. Hello there. Can anyone hear me? Area buzz said, okay. Yes, it looks like people can hear me. So, wonderful. Thanks for watching my presentation. Um, I find it ironic that uh, the COVID situation gave me the opportunity to do something like that. I could not have done that at a traditional uh, live NARAM, so it was cool that I was able to do that. Um, let's go to the question and answer section here real quick. Um, good morning, we can hear you, yes. Everybody in chat, check the chat area. No real questions yet. So uh, um, do you use micro scale metal foil adhesive? Um, no, I do not. But uh, I could try it sometime, I suppose. Let's see, looking for more questions. Feel free to answer questions. Um, do you have a list of products you used? It will make easier to, it will make it easier to go shopping. Um, you know, no, I don't, um, but I will say that I use Tamiya products whenever I'm given the opportunity. They, they have incredible reliability, and uh, especially with paints. The, the Tamiya lacquers are incredibly expensive, but very much worth it, especially for a high-value model. And uh, the Tamiya acrylics are especially valuable for airbrushing. Uh, you'll notice I did a... Uh, a lot of airbrushing during that particular presentation. The, the Tamiya acrylics with a simple airbrush like a Pache Model H are very, very simple and very, very reliable. So uh, um, I would uh, suggest that. Buzz, does that answer your question? Jennifer, does that answer your question? Um, will I be posting the presentation so that we can review it? Yes, at some point, this is going to go live on the uh, the Narcon website here. I don't know the mechanics behind that. I will probably also be putting it on my personal YouTube page, which is rocket.arrow. So if you look for rocket.arrow on YouTube, you'll find that. Uh, why can't you use parafilm with lacquer or enamel paint? Because it will melt. Uh, I, I found that out. Uh, in a very ugly fashion about 20 years ago. Um, so don't use parafilm with solvent-based paint. Uh, what techniques do you use to keep water slide decals from rippling? Um, great question. Um, first thing is paint over a gloss surface or, or apply decals over a gloss surface. Second, Use a setting agent like Microset. Uh, it, it, you can get it at a hobby shop. I know hobby shops are hard to find these days. They're probably available on Amazon or through any online hobby vehicle. That's Microset. So let's uh, see what else we've got. How durable, long-lasting is the 3M two-sided tape? I don't have an answer for that. I know that I have models that are 10 to 15 years old that have elements that use two-sided tape and it still works fine. Um, what leads to cracking or spidering in spray paint? That's another great question. So I am not a chemist, but here's how I understand this. Cracking and spidering occurs when you don't have a good adhesion between one layer of paint and the next layer of paint. The way to avoid that is to apply a second layer of paint 
very soon after you apply the first layer of paint. In other words, spray a layer of Tamiya lacquer, and within seven or eight minutes, do your thin layer. There's a chemical cross link place between the two, five or six. That's when you get the mismatch, they, uh, the, the crackling or the rippling occurs. There are doctoral theses to be written on this subject, and I am not the person to do that. Um, if you don't get to it quick, wait several days. Wait like a week before you put on another layer. I hope that helps. What else have we got? Um, can we see the lander with the docking nose? That's a great question. So here's the lander, and there's the docking nose. Everybody see that? It's a question of preference. I leave it up to you guys to decide which is better. What else? Uh, any way to retrofit the foil on a Mars lander? You can do that, Betty. Um, the only trick is that while it's assembled, once it's assembled, it's probably going to be trickier to uh, to apply the material. Probably easier to just get a new kit and start over again, is my guess. Bob Culbertson asks, do you use monocoat or similar? Um, I have in the past. I haven't in many years. Um, where I have used monocoat in the past are the uh, the sheets of monocoat self-adhesive trim film. Uh, interestingly enough, that was a... a, a uh, a technique used extensively by the late, great John Pursley. Let's all uh, lift a beer tonight to John Pursley. Um, that's a trick he taught me. And another trick from John Pursley is that he used monocoat trim film with a CNC mill to press and emboss rivet details into the sheet. He would then cut out the sheet and apply it to the model. So there's a there's a trick from, from John Pursley from uh, way back. Uh, Mark Bundick asks, what about a glue stick? You could probably use a glue stick. Um, I, I could think of a couple re places where that might be helpful, but uh, I would do it with, uh, with some experimentation. Pat asks, uh, how is the fume issue with airbrushing acrylics in a hobby room? The acrylics have a little bit of an odor, but it goes away within 30 seconds. And uh, it's really never been a problem for me. I, I've even quit using a, uh, I used to have a paint booth over here next to me in my workshop. I no longer do. I just put paper down on the workbench and spray the acrylics there. Again, the Tamiya acrylics are very benign and uh, the results look great. Looking for more. Do you use a paint booth with rattle can? Steve Crystal asks. My paint booth for rattle can paints is my wife's horse trailer outside. True story. Thank you for your kind comment, Ed. What are some good resources for the techniques you use to build? Um, advice for the beginner to get into space modeling detailing. Number one thing is we got to get out of the model rocket head. Uh, go hang out with scale modelers, plastic scale modelers. These are plastic scale modeling techniques that I've highlighted here. Um, go to model railroad shows. Go to uh, scale model shows. Go hang out at a hobby show shop if you still got one nearby. Um, go pick up back issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. Read articles about subjects other than what you're doing. Um, I've gotten lots and lots and lots of, uh, of techniques from the model railroading world. So I hope that helps. Let's see what else we have here. Do you, for painting, do you wear protective equipment for protection? In ventilation, um, Twitch, no. Um, if you've got a, a hobby shop nearby, Robert Nel Belknap suggests, yep, it's a great, a great resource. Uh, Jim Filler liked the docking nose. Thank you, Jim. How large an area would you use the double-sided tape, like for a fin or curved surface? 
Uh, Vince, that's a great question. Um, for for my purposes, you're, I think you would only be limited by the size of the material you get. The candy wrappers I used for the Mars Lander were very small. They were about four by four inches. I had no area that I wasn't able to cover completely with that. But I suspect you could use um, use it over a much larger surface if you could get the material in a larger format. Um, Bowden says he likes the docking nose. Thank you, sir. Uh, Buzz asked, do you apply microset under or over decals? Yes, I do. Um, that is a whole different presentation all of its own. So uh, um, it, what Buzz is referring to here is the use of setting agents, both under and over decals. Um, it's an advanced scale modeling technique. It's not advanced. It's fairly simple to do, actually. But uh, we could talk for an hour about it. So, um, so go Google that. Microset, microsole. Do you use Cricut at all? Cricut at all? Um, I have not. I know people who have, Bill. Um, it's something I should probably look, look into. Stuff that glues on life. Um, Mark, that's something you might want to log for later use. Buzz asks, um, even acrylic lacquers, no booth? I use no booth. Um, and I'm, I'm to be very clear that I'm, we're talking about the little tiny cans, jars of the Tamiya airbrushed acrylic paint. A spray lacquer, definitely outside. Uh, did I see you scraping paint off of areas where you applied decals? No, Don, you did not. What I was doing was using the tip of an exacto knife to just kind of move things around very gently. Uh, Paul Kenzer, will we see the second edition of the Maxi Brute build at Narcon 2022? Um, I think that's a great idea. I would like to finish up the Maxi Brute and uh, maybe present on it next year. Would you guys like that? Great. Um, Betty Dahl asked, did you double side tape the whole large area under the foil or just the edge? Betty, great question. I just did the edge. Um, Zoran asks, uh, very professional Q&A. Thank you, sir. What compressor type are you using for your airbrush? Thanks. I've got an old very old Badger airbrush compressor that I use. It's a little noisy, but it works great. Um, and the only thing I'd comment I'd make about compressors, especially if you live in a humid area, you're going to want a moisture trap on your airbrush compressor. Hope that helps, Zora. Um, Bill uh, references the cricket again. Um, to cut surface, to, that's a great idea, Bill. Um, Bill's talking about using his Cricut machine, which is a, a home cut vinyl device, to cut out surface details that he could apply to the model and then paint over. I think that's a great idea. One of the more innovative uses of a Cricut I've heard of, I think Kevin Johnson said he was going to use it to make a, uh, a painting mask Max then on nylon parachute, which I thought was a really cool idea. Jeff Taylor, thank you, very kind. Um, Jay Marsh asks, what pressure do you generally use? Um, I'm running about uh, 12 to 14 PSI on my, my uh, airbrush compressor. Mark Bundick points out that the Fine Scale Modeler website has lots and lots of resources for construction and painting techniques. Uh, Buzz just asked about uh, pressure again, again about uh, 12 to 14 PSI with the, the thinned Tamiya acrylics. Let's see what else we've got here. And it looks like we've exhausted the question queue there. 
right at the top of the hour. Um, I'll hang around for a couple more minutes because I think we're now at the lunch hour, so I'm not intruding on anyone else's time. But so if anybody has any more questions, let me know. Thanks for watching, but guys, I really appreciate it. Uh, Dan Bates asks, do you have a video of your Space Monkey Models V2 A4 conversion? No, I do not, but maybe I'll consider that. Uh, just as background, I, I produce a plastic scale model kit of the V2 rocket that I sell under my uh, personal brand, Space Monkey Models, spacemonkeymodels.com. And uh, I should add, um, Tim Van Milligan at Apogee sells a conversion kit to convert that into a flying model. He also markets the, 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 the basic kit for me as well. Betty asks, is the foil technique new to you? Um, uh, yes, I did it the first time for this project. Uh, uh, Terrace, Pat, thank you for your very kind words. Robert, thank you for your kind words. Stu, thank you for your kind words. Um, Michael Swanson asks, great. Old. Um, that is a great question. Um, I have not had problems with old decals. Um, I have heard of people overspraying them with clear gloss uh, spray, um, specifically the Krylon, material um, that I've got here in the workshop um, to, to kind of revitalize them and make sure they hold together. I, I would experiment with that though. Bowden, thank you. Daniel, thank you. Um, Douglas Aguilar asks, where do you reside? I live in Central Texas, Austin, the hippie part. Um, Betty Dahl, would you do it on something like a Little Joe scale model for competition? Would I use foils for a, a Little Joe scale model? My very first Little Joe, Mercury Little Joe model, I did use bare metal foil. And uh, no, I would not use it again. Um, others might have different experiences with it, but I've found that for the, the, the Mercury Little Joe, and I suppose the Little Joe too, as well, the Apollo Little Joe, the Tamiya gloss aluminum spray lacquer, it, it beats all other, other uh, painting techniques. And uh, Ray, thank you for the kind words. We're running out of questions, guys. So, I will, here's, here's a bonus tip, okay? Let's take a look at the, the, the X-Wing wing, if you will. On the original Estes kit, this is just an empty void, and that bugged me. Um, I looked at a lot of photos of X-Wing models from the movies, and there was a turbine right here, and I kind of liked that, and I wanted to reproduce that. So what I did was create a flat plastic master out of various styrene products. You can see some of the dimensionality of it there. It's flat. How do you get flat into a curved shape? Um, I pulled a mold off of this. Here's the mold, which is also flat. And here's another. He taught me resin in a thin layer in a mold and back it with fiberglass. And in this case, half ounce fiberglass let it cure just a little while and pull it out of the mold in what's called the green state. Um, it has great flexibility and you can then take that. I, what I did was pull it out of the mold in the green shape, 
and then lay that carefully over a section of BT60 tubing and let it finish curing into the hard state. That was then trimmed and placed in here as this curved part. So there's another shout out to John Persley, who we all miss very much. Uh, Buzz, I will touch base with you. Thank you. Betty, thank you for your kind words. I think I'll end there. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. That went off very well, I thought. I was really uptight about the uh, uh, the video and how that would present, but it looked fine to me. So uh, anyway, uh, thank you all, and I'll figure out now how to uh, get out of this mode here. Thanks, guys.